were introduced to Kelly Clarkson back in 2002 when she appeared on American Idol. She won the competition, and during the finale, she performed a duet of Does He Love You with her personal idol, Reba McIntyre. She signed to RCA Records, and as of this video, she has released 10 studio albums and has received countless accolades for her powerful vocals and impeccable songwriting skills. She is living the dream as it pertains to her career, but as far as her love life goes, well, it's a hot, stinking nightmare. Why? Because Kelly ignored all the red flags that were busting her upside the head, and she's still paying for it to this day. This is a cautionary tale like no other, so besties and brother besties, be sure to take some mental notes whenever you hear If you hate it when we get our karaoke on, because of you, I'ma keep singing in every video. Show is. <laughs> but for the rest of y'all, make yourself comfortable and bust open a bag of goodies from rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, green apple licorice, and butter toffee peanuts. When you watch an RRG video, you know we're going to give you a good backstory because studies have shown that a person's past plays a role in how they operate today. And as much as Kelly tried to forge a different path from the one that was presented to her during her childhood, she ultimately fell right into the same harmful generational patterns. Kelly was born in Fort Worth, Texas on April 24, 1982, as the youngest of three children. At the age of six, her parents divorced. Her sister lived with her aunt, her brother stayed with her dad, and Kelly grew up with her mom. In an interview, Kelly said her dad cut off all communication with her and her mom following the divorce. She tried to reach out to him several times throughout the years, but he would always reject her. She called her relationship with her father toxic and wondered if he was even capable of love. Eventually, she had to learn to walk away. She said, If someone presents such a cancerous environment and then just keeps hurting you, and even if they're doing it inadvertently and they just don't know better, you should just not have that person in your life. Her relationship with her dad, or lack thereof, inspired her to write the 2004 song, Because of You. The lyrics are, because of you, I try my hardest just to forget everything. Because of you, I don't know how to let anyone else in. Because of you, I'm ashamed of my life because it's empty. Because of you, I am afraid. Kelly told The Mirror her dad got remarried and had two sons with his second wife. Kelly's mother remarried but ended up divorcing her second husband. Kelly blamed her parents' failed romances on her inability to have solid relationships. She dated her American Idol competitor Justin Guarini, Graham Colton of the Graham Colton Band, and Ryan Key of Yellow Card. However, something was missing in all of those relationships. She later told People magazine that she never felt sexually attracted to anyone, and for a long time she started to believe that maybe she was asexual. In 2006, she was at the Academy of Country Music Awards, where she was performing alongside Rascal Flatts. Rascal Flatts tour manager Brandon Blackstock walked past her, and it was the first time Kelly felt her body tingle. She told People magazine, I was like, ready to take it all off. I'd never been turned on like that in my whole life. I was like, oh, that's the feeling. That's what they were talking about in Waiting to Exhale. <laughs> They didn't even exchange one word. And besides, Brandon was very much married at the time. Fast forward six years later to 2012, Kelly's then-manager, Narvel Blackstock, was married to Kelly's idol, Reba McIntyre. Narvel Blackstock told her that his son was getting divorced. And yep, his son was Brandon, of course. She and Brandon finally got to meet at that year's Super Bowl, where she was scheduled to perform the national anthem with her good friend, Blake Shelton, whom Brandon was managing at the time. Kelly told People magazine that she felt a lot of pressure because she didn't want to suck in front of the man she was trying to impress. Her performance was amazing, and later on, the father of two came up to her and mentioned they were from the same hometown. The alcohol was flowing by that point, so Kelly told him, oh, we're so getting married. <laughs> Brandon saw a sucker and licked it. <laughs> Just kidding.
Sort of. Kelly told Ryan Seacrest they were taking things slow and enjoying each other. The past, including the demise of her parents' relationship, was still a dominant thought in her mind. However, Kelly was approaching things from a positive point of view. She said, I'm from a family of broken marriages, but we will definitely break that trend one day. I'm completely head over heels for him. He knows that. They got engaged in December 2012, and she was proud to flaunt her canary yellow diamond engagement ring. In an interview with People magazine, she admitted that her happiness was ruining her musical creativity, but she was excited to be Mrs. Blackstock, and Reba was ecstatic to welcome her into the family. Reba told ET Online, To have my buddy as my daughter-in-law? Who could ask for more? Aw, everything was so perfect, right? Yeah, no. Kelly and Brandon got married in October 2013. A month later, she announced they were expecting their first child together. In December 2013, after two months of being husband and wife, a woman told a website called The Dirty that she was having an emotional affair with Brandon via text message. Another woman came forward and claimed she and Brandon knocked boots at an after-party for The Voice, where Brandon was there hanging out with his then-client, Blake Shelton. A source close to Brandon's ex-wife told a news outlet that Brandon had a long history of adultery, and friends were worried about Kelly's well-being. The anonymous source said she finally thought her dream to get married and have a baby had come true, but it's turning out to be a nightmare. Kelly shot back on Twitter by asking the anonymous sources to stop telling lies. Brandon's ex-wife even chimed in by telling Radar Online that the rumors were ridiculous and that she adored Kelly and Brandon as a couple. Kelly and Brandon's daughter, River Rose, was born in 2014. The following year, their world was rocked. Brandon's dad, Narvel, blindsided his wife, Reba, after 25 years of marriage by filing for divorce in 2015. Reba told CMT Radio Live, The divorce was not my idea. I didn't want it in any shape, form, or fashion, so it was really hard to make the adjustment. Since Narvel had been her manager for so long and their lives were intertwined, Reba had to pick up the pieces and start over on her own. She left Narvel and his management company in the dust and started managing herself through her own company. Their divorce was finalized in December 2015, and Narvel moved on expeditiously. By January 2016, Page Six had reported that Narvel was in a relationship with a woman named Laura Putty Stroud. And get this! Laura was Reba and Narvel's mutual friend. Say what now? Reba still has a picture of her and Laura on her Instagram from 2014. Now, we're not saying that because Narvel did Reba dirty that his son Brandon was going to do the same to Kelly, but it is a bit unfortunate that Kelly didn't take notice of what was happening between her in-laws. She committed the ultimate no-no by hiring Brandon as her manager. And as you already know, mixing business with pleasure rarely ends well in our red flag videos. So anyway, Kelly and Brandon welcomed their son Remington in 2016. Having children put things in perspective in regard to her relationship with her father. She couldn't believe her dad could walk away from her because that was something she could never do to her children. And watching Brandon with their children was hard for her because she didn't experience that kind of relationship with her own dad. However, it was also beautiful to see how much love a father could really have for his children. Things were better than ever between her and Brandon as well. She told Red Book, To keep it family appropriate, let's say we're just a lot more active than other couples. He was also taking her career to new heights by securing her a gig as a coach on The Voice in 2017 alongside his longtime client and Kelly's friend, Blake Shelton. But by November 2018, there were rumors of trouble in paradise. Star Magazine reported that Kelly had met with divorce lawyers. However, due to the magazine's reputation, no one believed the allegations. Kelly's dad passed away in 2019, and she found it difficult to sing the songs she wrote about him without bursting into tears. And then came the pandemic. Kelly, Brandon, and their children were quarantined at their Montana ranch. By that point, Kelly was hosting her own talk show and was filming remote episodes from the ranch. Countless couples saw their marriages end during the pandemic, including Kelly and Brandon. 
In June 2020, she filed for divorce. So as hard as she tried to do things differently from her parents, she ended up in a broken marriage just like them. And the divorce proceedings turned into a hot, stinking mess almost immediately. So what went wrong? Well, an insider told Us Weekly that Kelly could no longer trust Brandon because she felt like he was using her for her money. The insider added, The marriage was really, really awful at the end. She had a lot of questions that he just couldn't answer. Another insider told Us Weekly that Brandon was extremely jealous of Kelly's success. The insider said Brandon didn't do much to hide his jealousy, and it made Kelly feel ashamed of all the things she had accomplished. Kelly told E! Online that she even started to dim her own light in order to keep the peace in their relationship, and her ego made her stay with Brandon longer than she should have. Thankfully, there was a prenup in place, but Brandon decided to challenge it anyway. Mm, mm, mm. With Kelly and the children living in L.A. and Brandon holed up at their Montana ranch, a judge ruled that the prenup was valid, which meant Kelly would keep much of her money, including her estimated $20 million in annual earnings and the Montana ranch. Kelly wanted to sell the ranch, but Brandon was still living there, and he wasn't about to move without a fight. Say what now? He told the court he wanted to give up his job as a music manager and become a full-time rancher. Now, why the hell would he do that? Well, it was mainly because he lost his two money-making clients. Not only did Kelly fire him, but Blake fired him as well, as a sign of solidarity toward Kelly, whom he's been friends with for close to two decades. An insider told Us Weekly that Blake can easily find another music manager, but his friendship with Kelly is forever. Brandon argued he needed to stay at the ranch in order to make a living as a rancher. The judge later decided that if he wanted to stay, he would be responsible for the cost of maintaining the ranch, which was calculated at about $81,000 per month. Eventually, Brandon, with his broke ass, <laughs> decided he would just get to stepping. He had to pay Kelly $12,500 per month in rent until he finally packed up and left. Kelly gave him a little over 5% ownership in the multi-million dollar estate, and Brandon purchased a $1.8 million home on 40 acres in a nearby city. After Kelly was awarded primary physical custody, Brandon decided to get everything he thought he was owed. Now, we ain't saying he a gold digger. <laughs> but in December 2020, Brandon requested $301,000 per month in spousal support and $135,000 per month in child support. I know you lying. Brandon also asked Kelly to give him $2 million to cover his lawyer fees. In addition to that, his company, Starstruck Management Group, which his dad was also a part of, sued Kelly for $1.4 million in unpaid commissions for her work on The Voice and The Kelly Clarkson Show. Child, daddy and son were running game on Kelly and Reba. Kelly clapped back by stating Brandon was never a legally certified talent agent during the 13 years he managed her career. She asked that he pay her back for all the commissions and fees he received while acting as her manager. <laughs> Checkmate, bitch. In the end, a judge ordered Kelly to pay Brandon $150,000 per month in spousal support and $45,601 per month in child support. She also had to cough up $1.25 million for his attorney fees. Dang, dog. In August 2023, during a Las Vegas performance, Kelly slammed Brandon and his pappy Ruh -roh. while singing a cover of the TikTok viral song A B C D E F U. Kelly switched up the lyrics and sang, <coughs> "Me me me me, A B C D E F you and your dad and the fact that you got half and my broken heart turn that shit into art." you and your view from the valley I bought to <laughs> Got him. Looking back on the demise of her marriage, she told People Magazine she didn't have any regrets. However, she realizes that she missed a lot of warning signs. She then joked that she might even call her next album Red Flag Collector. Did we miss any red flags in Kelly and Brandon's relationship? Let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.